This episode of Connected with Kelly is sponsored by Pickers Vodka, proudly made in Nashville, Tennessee. So Pickers is a tribute to the musicians whose sounds fill the air in Music City. Pickers Vodka is distilled 11 times from non-GMO corn and it's gluten-free. My new favorite is the Pickers Unplugged Vodka Soda. They're in cans. They are only 96 calories, zero carbs, great flavors. You need to give them a try. Visit PickersVodka.com to find out more or to order online. to see a friend come around with a project that you know is going to be amazing. I'm talking about Kenan Smith. Hey guys, it's Kelly Sutton. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Connected with Kelly. So my friend Kanan had an album out, Bronco, in 2015, and we haven't heard much from him since then. Well, let me tell you, he is back, and this album, High Country Sound, is everything that he has really wanted his music to be. He's with a new label. It's Round Here Records, run by Brian and Tyler from Florida Georgia Line. They've been friends for years. We're going to get more about that story, how they met, and we're going to find out about what's going on in Kanan's life now, how music has really made such an impact on him, and where he hopes his music will continue to grow. Get ready, everybody. It's time to get connected with Kanan Smith. Kanan Smith, my friend, how have you been? So good. I mean, uh, life is... Life is precious and i'm living it so loud and so full right now it's awesome tell me about what's going on in the personal life because i see these pictures of of cute little cute little people yeah virginia rose was uh born halloween 2019 and uh she's our first and we uh immediately got thrown into you know what new parents do that world of just like survival mode not knowing you know they send you home with a baby and, you know, and you don't even know what you're doing. And uh, so we've just been, it's been really amazing and, and beautiful, all the, all the turns and, and um, sharp, sh the sharp stop really to life as I knew it um, in every area, not just once, once you have a baby, but then COVID hits and just everything that I knew to be uh, regular was, was gone and for a guy like me who's um pretty self-centered by nature i think it has been really just a, an amazing thing that god has used my baby girl and this season of life that we're all in to strip away some things that needed stripped away and some and that's grown me up in a way that is allowing me to to appreciate life you know in a in a way that uh is, is so much deeper and more reflective and grateful um, than maybe it ever has been, which spills over into where I'm at now with my music and, and all of it. I definitely want to dive into the new project because I am loving it. And it feels so different and so fresh. And and I don't know, it, it's interesting in knowing you it, it, to hear this music coming out. I'm like, gosh, yes, this feels so right. It fits you. And I know that you co-wrote everything on this. Um, so let's let's dive in. Tell me more about how this project got started and, and the development with the FGL guys. Yeah. So I was at a place in my career two and a half years ago now. Um, I think is where I is when we kind of made the move. I, I signed up with those guys. I was at a place where I just felt, and I didn't know it at the time, but I needed help. I needed help, but, but not in the way that it may sound like at face value. I needed help in a way that I didn't even know I needed help. And that was, I needed to be uh, reminded what I love about music, what moved me here, what, what um, I'm inspired by, what I want to say, what, um, what am I all about, you know? And uh, 
and I was at a just, I was just too lost to know all of that. I was aiming for commercial success and I want, don't, you know, I want commercial success. We all do. But I think that I was inspired by that instead of inspired by uh, life and the, 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 the parts of me that are truest and, and the stories I have to tell and the places, the place I came from, the people who shaped me, all of the stuff that makes you an individual is what you should sing about. And I just, um, I think I'd, I'd done some near misses in the past. And um, I think Bronco was a home run as far as, a, 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 you know, the truest version of myself, that, that song will always be, um, a true, you know, a, a major truth in my life. But this is a whole album of songs where I just feel like I'm coming at it from a place of, um, you know, reflection where I'm digging instead of reaching, where I'm more grounded in my approach. I'm, I, I'm proud of where I came from and I'm proud of what I love about music and the way that, that my music sounds is, is because that's the kind of music I love and I'm not trying to be cool. I'm not trying to keep it young. Um, the, the language may not be, um, you know, on pop radio or any of that stuff, but I don't, I sing country music and I moved here to sing country music and to do it in a way that inspires me. And so I had to produce this too. I felt like, eight of the 12 I I ended up producing on my own and I felt like I had to because of that same thing this has all been this has all been a a coming home a a chance to put a flag in the ground for who I am and um, I felt like I had to take on that responsibility uh, across the board um, and just get my fingerprints all over it and for better or worse I am responsible for the way this this album turned out and you know that's that's something that was a little bit, you know, it gave me a little fear initially because it's, you know, you can't blame anybody else if right. it doesn't go the way you want it to. But what I can do is appreciate um, that every time I hear it, I know that came from a place of truth and I know it came from um, what I was hearing in my head and the musicians in the room were just amazing um, and took it to a, a level that I'm proud of. So, yeah, I, I feel like this has been a, you know, a, a, a real deep dive into a, a, a coming of age sort of like mentality, you know, and like, I, I thank God for, for giving me the opportunity. Uh, I thank God for the timing of it all. Um, that I haven't had a sophomore album until now is really another thing I'm well, grateful and I for. Was- I have to ask you because how old were you when you came to town? Uh, it was 2005, January, 2005. So 16 years ago, I was 22. Okay. So if you're thinking about 22 year old Canaan and what you came to town and when you started in this business, there's no way that you could be producing the music that you're producing now back then. You hadn't lived enough life to produce this music. Yeah. I didn't have those stories. I knew I loved, that's the, you know, ironically, it sounded the same way when I moved here. The music I love sounds like what this album sounds like. That hasn't changed, but I didn't have, I didn't have the, the mileage. I didn't have the memories. I didn't have, um, I didn't have that part. Right. Figured out. It takes time. And, you know, and living and then the mundane, repetitive nature of this season of life has also been, such an attribute and such a um a catalyst for stripping away things and you know that that didn't matter and finding the 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 ones that do and bringing those to the forefront you know because when you do those sort of repetitive mundane daily things that you don't you think maybe you're missing out on on other stuff but in reality you're living which means you're you've got a story coming together you know, you're something's being written mm-hmm. every day in the story of my life, anyhow. And so, just let it let it breathe. And that's the season I'm in is just letting it let it things letting things breathe. And then as as they're 
as they're coming to the forefront, just really um, being fearless in that, um, just being fearless in the, the way that, that, that that's being told, I guess, is my, is my goal. Well, and I think it's interesting, too. You wouldn't be able to create this music back then, but then... I don't know, even if even if somebody's pitching you these songs, even if you had these songs that were pitched to you, not being able to convey them with the same sense of truth that I hear in your voice when I'm listening to this new album. I mean, this new album is so good because the songs are fantastic. I mean, Colder Than You, I love this song. I know that that was out for a hot second. It is so, so good. But then also, Mason Jars and Fireflies, that speaks directly to my heart, and I know it does to yours, too. I can hear it in your voice when you're singing that song. Awesome. Thank you. You know, that was that was me growing up in southern Indiana, northern Kentucky, running around chasing fireflies. Poor things never stood a chance once I got them in that Mason Jar. They were dead in, like, 20 minutes. But, <laughs> you didn't you know, put holes in the lids? Of, well, you try. You try, <laughs> right? It doesn't It doesn't matter. They're still going to die pretty much. <laughs> not pretty much. Not, you didn't, didn't, couldn't find a sharp enough stick. That was it. That was it. And dad wouldn't let you have a nail by yourself. Or if you did, you'd probably hit your, your thumb. But, you know, just listening to this, it is it is a sense of truth. And, and I think that that's so interesting in what you've done with your career. Because in having success early on and then being in the machine, because you were a cog in the machine and you were going along with it, at what point did it really become crystal to you that, this is not necessarily the path that I want to take, or this isn't the way that I want to take it. I think like nothing was satisfying. And I only found myself being disappointed because I was measuring success by numbers and um, chart position and things that ultimately are only one piece of the pie in what defines success, you know, for me now that I, I want that. Of course I want that. Because that means your music's being heard more and by, you know, at, at a wider reach. But uh, I think, I think ultimately, just maybe God using this season of my life again and where I'm at to sort of uh, recalibrate the things that matter, you know, and grow me up and, um, and it's done, you know, it's, 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 it has done that. Now I, now I feel like this is already a success, you know, I, cause I got to, I got to do a project I'm proud of, you know, so that, that's a huge, I mean, you can't be more successful really at the end of the day, yeah. cause I'll be able to listen to this album and play this for people when I'm old and gray. In working with um, Brian and Tyler, what what was that like versus what's happened in your career in the past? I mean, it, it seems to me like they were just like, hey, dude, we love you. Go do your thing and just let you do it. And that is ultimately how it, how it has gone. But initially it was a coming alongside of and a reminding, hey, you don't have to try to be anything but yourself. And the empowerment that from them you know, them empowering me to go do that, to just be the best version of me, you know, that I can be. And, and, um, I mean, that's everything that, 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 that's, you know, I wasn't a number. I wasn't a, I wasn't a, a, a stat sheet in their eyes. I was a friend who moved to town 16 years ago, similar, same time frame that they did. And the guy they met then and the songs that I was singing then, um, they believed in and thought was good enough. And so just be that guy, you know, and, 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 and that's, it's, it comes so natural when you're just being yourself, but I just wasn't being myself for a period of time. And so it wasn't feeling natural and I was feeling lost, you know, and I think God used has used him in my life to set me back on a path. That's been very full circle. And, and I feel like we're just starting now. Like I'm, I'm I feel like my career is just beginning my Nashville, recording career in my opinion is now and in the go forward I, th I i i'm just stoked about it because i think there's a lot more to say i do want to know i i, I want to know the story behind how you guys met was there a certain event that you were at or how did you meet brian and tyler well we went to belmont together okay so uh, i moved here in 05 january 05 
and started as a true sophomore because I had some credits from James Madison University in Virginia, where I went first um, on my journey to Music City. Um, I, it ran through the Shenandoah Valley in Virginia. And um, so when I got here in 05, I think I uh, just started, you know, Belmont has a way of bringing people to, who do the same thing together. You know, the majority of people are there to do music, um, but you can find pretty quick your circle, you know, at least if the fans of country music who are here to do country music. And, and um, my sister, I believe, may, met Tyler first because uh, they were the same age. Um, and introduced me to Tyler and we just hit it off super quick. Um, and then BK was doing uh, some praise and worship stuff at this uh, uh, like Wednesday night, I think Wednesday night service we were going to. And then he and Tyler hooked up, started writing songs together. And so we all then were starting to hang out and write songs together and just, it was part of the crew, you know? So that, that evolved over time to just being, uh, you know, now, now we're still truest friends you can be, but also um, business partners. And it feels like those same days, though. It feels like the college days where we're just writing songs after class is what it feels like, you know, <laughs> and, um, and collaborating on, uh, on that level, being inspired by each other and uh that's a that's again that's a relationship that i think god had a, a plan for all along um mm -hmm. and i'm thankful so here's a question would you have continued in music had this whole full circle moment not happened with brian and tyler i don't know i don't know i've i've lost uh faith so many times you know, and that's part of the journey too, but I, I definitely was in a season of doubt and just kind of just discouragement. And I had done the club tour circuit three going on four times. I think it was, um, I think it was four times kind of feeling like at the same status because I didn't have enough radio success to grow it to the next phase, or we were out of cycle to get on the right tour, or all these things that, ultimately like yeah that's all cool and that's all you know we want I want that still I want I want the um like the why I, I want my I want my music to reach as far as it can and so commercial success is part of that but I was so discouraged by measuring things up against that you know I was I was measuring my success up against those parameters that the industry determines makes you a success or not and um and that's just that was to, to me i can't speak for everybody but to me that was a real blindsiding um sort of devastating uh you know uh casualty of of, of doing music that way so i was at a place where i needed to just um either do something else, you know, and like literally with a career or just, um, just be reset. And, and God knew what he was doing. And I have this chance to be reset. Now I am reset because of the chance that I had to, to be. And, uh, I'm in love with it. I could never, I'm not going anywhere. I'm just getting started. I'm just getting that. started. So that's how that, that's where I'm at. So how did, tell me more about like, how all of this came back together you guys have known each other obviously for years and and you've done so many incredible songs and and then was it just a phone call I mean did Tyler or BK pick up the phone and call you or how did it all come back to where we are working out with Tyler we were on a regular routine with a bunch of buddies at his garage in his garage um three or four times a week almost we, we were working out pretty heavy for a minute and, um, and it was right in that season where I just was kind of, you know, a little bit, uh, just kind of down on, on, and then lost is what it felt like. And, and so he just kind of had been stewing. I think he and BK had already been stewing on what they wanted to do next with their, 
you know, by creating a publishing company and a record label and all that stuff had been conversations that they, they'd already had. I didn't know that that was part of the plan yet. I just uh, was kind of sharing where I was at with, you know, a best friend and um, the rest, you know, is history. He just said, you know, well, if you're going to, if you're leaving UMG, I kind of already decided I was going to ask off the label and, and I needed to switch things up in that regard. And he, he kind of, Tyler and Brian had already figured out what they were going to do. And, and they, they knew they had a place for me, a home for me. And so I think Tyler just kind of put the bug in my ear to be thinking about if that is what I want to do, you know, maybe they, maybe we can work together. And so it just ended up being a perfect timing thing. So I want to dive into a couple of the other songs on High Country Sound. Um, tell me about Grounded. I love Grounded. Um, right off the top, it's the first song on the album because I, it, it's the tone setter for um, where I came from. And it pays tribute to the, the place and the people that got me here. So it's, uh, it was important for me to have a song. Um, the whole album is a coming home a returning to my home, a, um, a full circle coming of age version of who I am, you know, and I, you can't be that without going home. You can't be that without um, digging deep. And so th this whole album, you know, um, is all about being grounded and in the, the people and the, like I said, the people in the place that have, have contributed to me feeling that way right now in my life. And Wrote it with Jim Beavers and uh, Ben Stennis. And it was one of my favorites when we wrote it. And it's still one of my favorites on the album. What is the one song, if people are, are looking at this album and they only have three minutes that they could listen to one song, which one would you tell them to listen to? Um, Probably Cabin in the Woods or Sweet Virginia. One of those. I bet Cabin in the Woods would probably be my... Eh, it's one of those two. I just think that they're both um, nostalgic and they're both, um, they both are in a, like a mental escape that a lot of people can relate to and drift off to. And to me, that's, that's country music's greatest strength. Um, superpower is to be able to drift you off, mm -hmm. put you in, put you there and, and drift you off. And um I, you know, I've had some, some, like just for instance, last night, I got a, a message on Instagram from this 25 year old kid from Virginia who I've never met. And he's, he told me, he said, I've only cried twice listening to a song in my life, in my 25 years. And he said, sweet Virginia did it to him. It teared him up. And he said, it made him call up his buddies. He used to run on the river with and rekindle this Virginia spirit, these memories and and uh, to me, that 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 was more validating than anything, you know, like more validating than having a hit, quote unquote, is you're hitting home with somebody. So that was cool. You know what I think is really interesting when people want something so badly and you hold on to it so tightly or you're so wound up and you're you're chasing, chasing, chasing. It doesn't happen. And it's almost that moment when you decide to let go. And just release and be in the moment that stuff starts to flow and it really starts to happen for you. And I feel like that's what's going on with you right now. It is what's going on with me. And that's just a result of God's timing and uh, and the things that, it, you know, my daughter, my 16 month old Virginia Rose and the things that she's taught me and the the um, the things I feel when I look into her eyes, the things I see and the things I care about, what I'm, what my goals are have all been shifted. My purpose, all of it um, has, has changed who I am. And, and I'm glad that I now have this perfect time to, to put a flag in the ground for who I am and what I want to say. What's her favorite song on the album? Uh, she's only heard the ones that are out because we have a little Alexa device and we ask her to play stuff, you know, because she loves dancing. And so she's heard Colder Than You, Cabin in the Woods, Sweet Virginia and Mason Jars and Fireflies. Um, and she loves them all. And she knows us dad every time it comes on. So we uh, 
we listen to tons of music. It's it's a lot of uh, you know the wheels on the bus and all that kind of that stuff, you know. <laughs> but it's also we mix in some old classic country, and Christy will ask for my songs too every now and then, and and uh, so she's getting a full dose. Good, good. You can't live alone on Baby Shark. You got to have more than that. God. <laughs> You got to throw some gummy bear song in there. Oh, Lord. There's another one. It's raining tacos. You need to try that one if you haven't. Heard I haven't that heard yet. that one yet. Amazing. There you go. Thank you're, you. You're You'll welcome. probably love it. Yeah, I think. Thank you. Let's see. Let me hear it first. But it is it is so much fun to watch like your kids and what they're listening to and how you, that's going to influence them. Like she's going to hear all of these things and that influences her. So what was playing in your house when you were a little kid that influenced you? Great question. Um, well, my dad was a singer and he was in a band. And so I grew up around band practice and rehearsals and shows, um, not on any kind of level that was anything but small regional um, touring and whatnot, but it was still, the, it was the business. And, you know, it was the, it was at least the, uh, the, 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 uh, the passion was easy to, to adopt, you know, because it was right there for the taking and I was already wired to be, to love music and, you know, to do what I do. So he was playing um, a lot of sixties rock and roll that he loved, you know? And so I heard a lot of that. Um, my grandpa was playing Vince Gill records and um, I was digging on, you know, something in between, I was bouncing back and forth between the uh, alternative rock scene and George Strait across my heart, you know, from the pure country. I saw pure country as a kid, that movie and loved the music, you know, Heartland is still a jam. I love that song. I've got, uh, there's a VHS of me singing across my heart to my mom on um, camera back when I was like a, a you know eight-year-old kid or something and so but I was you know but I was learning how to play guitar and I was doing Nirvana songs so I mean, it was everything it was kind of and I had you know I, I had older brothers and they were all listening to their stuff too and it, the music the house was filled with music we had a piano we had a drum kit we had guitars so music came from everywhere in every direction um and it has it has been a soundtrack to what to to what I sound like now for sure. There's there's pieces of all of it in there. So if we picked the five songs that you say would influence who Kanan Smith is right now, and I mean it could be from early on to you know a song that you heard two weeks ago, and I know this is putting you on the spot, but what would be what would be your number one? Would that be something from George Strait? Well, there'd be a lot. I don't know if I'm going to be able to give you a like the order, the most influential. That's I need okay. five. Five, okay. in, five, five is good. Five is good. Five. good. Yes. I would say Norwegian Wood by the Beatles. Um, because I was learning to play guitar when I was at, at my biggest Beatles craze. Like I was such a fan of the Beatles. And I, that was right around the time I was learning guitar. And their music is so hook driven and so yeah. parts driven they've got so many sig licks in their in their approach um and that one was just such a cool riff to know how to play as a kid and so i had to learn how to do it um norwegian wood when i think of me learning to play guitar that song is what i think of um, um probably cross my heart by george Strait or easy come easy go for two different reasons cross my heart because i realized you could the country music was such a uh just a kind of straightforward approach to connecting with someone telling mm -hmm. a story mm -hmm. um even a love even though that's a love song it's it's you know it's such an honor i cross my heart and promise you know it's just a really simple uh delivery simple message and I liked that about it, even at a young age, because I could sing it to my mom and it would melt her heart, you know. So there's a there's a there's a there's an avenue right then and there to connect with people from an early age. Uh, also, Easy Come, Easy Go was another, another George Strait song that I appreciated for a different reason. I love the uh, I love the Strat, like the Stratocaster tone 
uh, in, in that little siglet. And that was like something I appreciated uh, about that one. Um, I would say probably uh, Kim 6A by Switchfoot, their very first album they ever put out. I was, um, you know, I was skateboarding in Virginia at that time, uh, doing the like slightly rebellious phase. We had lost my brother in a car accident and my two oldest surviving brothers um, kind of, you know, went pretty hardcore rebellious. And I, I was always on the fringes of don't want to piss mom off too bad, but I'm, this is kind of cool. What's going on here. I'm going to go smoke cigarettes and skateboard with my brothers, all, you know, and vandalize some house in the neighborhood being built. So I was at this phase of my life where that kind of music was what I needed to hear. It was rock and it was, uh, but it had a pop uh, approach to it um, or a commercial, uh, that's what I mean, a commercial quality about it. Like there were, it was still melodies, you know, it, you could crank it and it rocked, but it was still m melodic and, and it had hooks. Um, so I'd say, I'd say that song was one of them. Um, and then Please Remember Me that Rodney Crow wrote, but Tim McGraw on his Place in the Sun album put that one out um and that one just I, again i think i loved it all i think i loved the beautiful lyric you know just like the waves like i'm sure i'm gonna keep on coming back for more and i was like damn like and i'm i was probably 14 years old 15 maybe when i was when i discovered that and uh but it just took me it was a it was a it was just such an honest, beautiful, poetic way of saying how you felt. And it was a longing. And I just, I, I think I've always connected with those, the depth and the longing in a song like that. Um, so that's one. And I believe that's four. Is that four? That's four. Unless you want to count both George Strait songs, that would be five. Oh, wow. Well, let me. If you got one more. Let me think of one more. Um Oh, what am I just doing? I'm just thinking like all time, all time. Hmm. This is such a hard. I know. I, do, I know. That's why I feel bad that I didn't tell you this before because it's hard. I know it really is. All right. Here I got one for you. Okay. This is, and this is not because I was a fan of the song. This is because, you, you know, it's been an influence because of the importance and um, there's two different versions. The original was by All for One. It's called I Swear. The second version was John Michael Montgomery. And love uh, that song. I love, love, that song. love, love, love that song. And uh, but I love it not because I loved it when it was out, but I my brother did, my oldest brother, and so he was he was dating his girl they were 16 years old this summer he crashed and went on to be with the lord but he um loved that song and it was his and his girlfriend's song you know that was their song or whatever and so we played it at the funeral and for the longest time none of us could listen to it you know we just couldn't do it and I mean, even to this day if i heard it i probably wouldn't make it through but they're uh that song it wouldn't matter who was singing it wouldn't matter what it sounded like it just was proof that you know music is an association with a memory and a person and a place um and so for me to to say a song that's been most influential i can't leave that one out because it had to it had to be one on the list for for you know for the for that proof that music is a language um you know that's one of a kind. Yeah, absolutely. Man, thank you for sharing that with me. That that means a lot. That means a lot. Well, I am so excited about this project. I think so many people are going to just fall in love with it. It's it's so real. It's so honest. It sounds amazing. You sound so comfortable and so at home singing this. So, Thanks, Bill. Yeah. Absolutely. I can't wait. So good. By the way, where are you in your house? Is this the garage? I'm in the garage. I'm in the garage. Yeah. 
This is, um, I built these wall baffles. This is like for, to help with sound. And I had these hanging in our house. The house we lived in before this was a little condo and I had my own studio. This is pre Virginia Rose. You know, I okay. had my studio cause we had space in the house for, for that kind of thing. Right. Now we don't have space for anything, but I feel you brother. But, but I, I moved you. them. I took them off the wall in the old house and put them out here in the garage when, once COVID hit. Cause this is, a, you know, I, I had a, a place to write a writing room over at tree vibes. And then I was like, all right, well, I better move it home. So I, I've been out here s- since 2019. <laughs> I love it. I <laughs> so love it. Is that what it is now? No, it would have been January. Oh, when did COVID hit? Like February of 20, right? Yes. Something like that. All right. So since right. early you know, oh, it's been over a year now. I've been out here in the garage just doing it from here. I even recorded half the the vocals on the album right out here. Oh, you're kidding. under a blank under a blanket. I take my mic here, face the baffles to help with the sound going this way, and then what's behind me is just garage door, and you know, a garage that doesn't sound good. So I'd throw a blanket over over top of me, me and the microphone, and hit record. And just sing it out here in the garage, which was, you know, pretty cool too. And the whole, you know, the whole, um, the picture of coming home and, and grounded and being grounded here, here and at the house, you know, and just my story as a whole. Brother, it's so good to talk to you. Congratulations on everything. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Love what you do. 2021 is going to be a really good year for you and me both. We love Kanan Smith. High Country Sound is the album, guys. Check it out. The new song that's out is Cabin in the Woods. Also, Sweet Virginia. Colder Than You is still probably my favorite on the album. I would love to hear your favorite. If you've listened to this album, let us know about it in the comments. Also, tell us what you love listening to just to lift your mood. This is one of those albums I think you could put on and listen to it all day long, playing in the background. Fun stuff for everybody. What's your favorite mood lifter? Hit us in the comments. Make sure that you are subscribed to the channel. Hit that bell and you will be notified when new episodes come out. And we've got new ones for you each and every week. Until then, make sure that you are staying connected with all the people and things you love the most. 